Hello, we have an amazing city and we have an amazing emergency plan. We've had two natural disasters in the last few years and our cities dealt exceptionally well with those natural disasters. In fact, the one where we had the huge windstorm come through and tear up roofs and tear up the trees, um, we were able to use this emergency plan and get the city cleaned up even before the federal agencies were able to arrive here. So uh, we have a great emergency plan and I wanted to explain to you how you can help make it more efficient. Because as you know, if we had a major earthquake and the roads were broken up, it might be difficult to even get down your street, let alone to the hospital if you needed some help. So if we have an emergency plan in place, we have a way to get you help. And the way this works, instead of the gov from working from the government down, the way this works is it works from the neighborhoods up. Now, if the phone lines are down and we have no way to communicate even through the cell towers, um, if there were some kind of a natural disaster that made it so that we couldn't get to the hospital or we just had a, a huge disaster that we needed to uh, engage with this plan, we could do it. It's already set up. And the way it works is there's a neighborhood block captain or a neighborhood coordinator. You can call them whatever you want or it can be a her. Just um, They will walk up and down the street and assess the damage that's happened on the street. Now, I guess I should start at the very beginning. Everyone in our city should have been given or will be given a packet which contains three placards that explains the plan of our emergency plan. And there's different colors on the placards. There's a red in case there's an emergency for a life-threatening situation and needs to be dealt with right away. There's a yellow, and which means we need some help, but nobody's, nobody's going to die. For example, if your roof got torn off a little bit, you do need some help. That's a big deal, but it, it, it's not uh, like life-threatening, like your house collapsed on somebody and, and we can't get them out or... or um, they're bleeding. Something like that would be life-threatening. Uh, and, and then there's the green placard, and the green one is mean, just means that all is well. Everybody's okay. And um, so we have the three colors, and if there were a major disaster, the first thing that should happen is the people should know where their emergency binder is and the instructions for the plan, and also any other, there's, you can put all kinds of stuff in there like how to sterilize water. Anyway, you're, so that's your emergency binder. You would go there, grab your uh, color, and put it on your door. And if it's the type that you can fill out, let's say you were injured and bleeding. Um, you, you got an amputation during a, something fell on you. And, and it's a serious wound. So um, you need help right away, but you can't get yourself to the hospital and you need some help. What you could do is have somebody fill out this form with your address, your name, your age, and all of this on there, and put it on your door, and when the assessor comes down the street, they will collect the information and they will take it over to the area coordinator. The area coordinator then takes that inform or calls that in or information in on the radio to the district coordinators. And the district coordinators then call that into the city. And the city has radios where they can call that into the county if need be. And those emergency first responders will be sent to help you. So um, if you've got a placard and you get it filled out right away and get it put on your door, then people can respond to your needs. If you don't have any needs, then put up the green one. If you have some needs, um, maybe your water line is broken and it's starting to fill your basement or there's a gas leak and you've got it shut off but you need somebody to come and check it out so you can get it back on, put a yellow one up. 
if it's a gas leak and you can't get it shut off, then that's definitely a red one. So uh, you have to use your your knowledge about what you what kind of an emergency it is and put up the right colored placard for your particular house. And if you're not home and if everything looks well, maybe your neighborhood coordinator would be nice enough to put up a green placard on your door so that he's knocked on your door, check, make sure nobody's home. Um, that way when the federal agencies come along, they don't take that spray paint and spray a big X on your door and then break in and check it out and make sure that you're all, I don't know, it's just, they, they still might do that, but at least you, there's some communication saying that your house was okay. Okay, so back to the placards. Um, that neighborhood coordinator, he's going to collect up that information, he's going to take it, and then uh, when the city gets it, they can dispatch a CERT uh, individual or group over to your house to help you out, or the first responders can come and help you out. Um, there's lots of different ways to get across the roads, even if the ground is broken up and maybe they're going to send a four-wheeler or something uh, or uh, some type of a vehicle that can get over it uh, out here to help us out. So um, that's what how the emergency drill work or the emergency plan works and we have a drill once a year and you can help you can be part of the solution instead of part of the problem by participating in these drills and every year when they tell you that there's going to be a drill you take out your green placard and you put it on your door unless you're one of the unlucky ones who gets to be simulated for a real emergency and then they'll put up a colored placard. Um, another way you can help is there's a neighborhood skills and resources survey that you can fill out and turn that into your block captain and he will collect the information and He'll say, oh, you know how you're a nurse, or you're a doctor, or, or maybe you've got a chainsaw that would help out in a situation, or maybe you're trained in electrical uh, wiring and you can fix somebody's house if they've had a problem with uh, their wiring or the plumbing or whatever you might have skills doing. So that's what you can do, uh, fill out that resource survey. Another way you could, you could help out is to volunteer for CERT or even to be a block captain when they have these drills. So I appreciate you taking time to listen to this and hopefully we don't ever have a major disaster but it would be worth saving your life if we were prepared and we had a plan and this is our plan and hopefully we can make the plan work and we can save lives and we can get back to normal as quickly as possible so that we can uh, minimize the effects of any disaster just like we did with that windstorm you know the redwood trees are tall and strong and the way that they make their strength is by linking their roots together and us like the redwood trees when we link our neighborhoods together we can be stronger to withstand any wind or any type of storm that will come our way and I hope that you have a marvelous day. Thank you.